Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week, we'll be looking at trusses. We had a question come in about trusses and how to tweak them, so I'm going to go through a couple of tips real quick. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go to level one here, and I'm just going to put the truss on the ground. Now, if I wanted to put it in space, we could come up the top here, and you see it says roof level. We could even go up to roof and place it there, so either location would be fine. Now, the trick when you're putting in trusses is, number one, you have to load a truss. So if I go up top to structure and I hit trusses, uh, a truss needs to be loaded first. So we can go to insert, <coughs> look family. You can actually go out to the structural area. You'll see here we have structural. Uh, we'll come down and you'll see here it says structural trusses. And you'll pick the format of the truss that you want. Now, if I'll pick a couple of uh, trusses here, I'll go ahead and load them in. And okay, so now those trusses have been loaded in. Now, to put a truss in, here's the trick. You go ahead and put in whatever you want the beam to be built out of, or the, excuse me, the truss to be built out of, load it first. So I'm gonna go up top, insert, load family. And I've already done this already, but I'm gonna go up one, and uh, you may have saw from the previous screen, I was in structural framing. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, since I want this to be a wood truss, I'm gonna go to wood, and I'm gonna say dimensional lumber, hit okay. And I'm gonna load in some shapes, maybe a two by four, two by 10, two by eight, two by six, and I hit okay on that. So load it in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw a beam, uh, use the beam tool, and use a 2x4. So our, it's going to be structure, beam, and I'm going to choose a 2x4, and I'm going to put a 2x4 right here. Now, by putting that 2x4 in, what it does, it sets up for the truss. I know you're like, wait, what? But let's go ahead and do that. So I fire up the truss now, and I choose one of the truss types that are loaded. I pick the truss, and then I pick two points. Now, what Revit's going to do is it's actually going to build a truss based off of that information. So if I go to 3D, you'll notice how it's using uh, two by fours in this instance, okay? So now, what if I was drawing another shape? Now, I'm going to do it as in 3D just so you can see it in action. So if I go to beam here, and I change it over to, let's say, a W12 by 26, and I put that beam in. Okay, so there's the beam. Now, watch what happens when I go and put a truss in. It's truss, I put the truss and you'll see how it builds out of those shapes. So that's a, a good tip to know about on how these things work. Now, once the truss is built, you can start to tinker with these trusses, and if you want to play with the internals, you can actually hit tab, and you can actually pick that internal element. Uh, at that point, you can see here's the internal aspects of that, and it can be tweaked here. Um, in this video, though, I'm going to show you just how to draw a truss, because sometimes you have weird or, or, uh, custom edges here. I'm sorry, you're off the screen a little bit. You have a custom... Uh, type situation, and this is just not working for you. Uh, you can, again, use these structural trusses, but you can also draw your own. So that's going to be what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to go to my plan view. Let me go ahead and uh, do this first. Okay, adjust that screen. Now, what are we trying to build here? So we're trying to build a truss, but we want to, let's say, have it maybe a 2 by 6 2 by 8 truss. Um, and we know how we want it to be, but the, we just can't get these truss units to do what we want efficiently. And that's okay. We can just create our own truss pretty quickly. I'm going to go back to my, let's say, roof here. And while I'm in the roof, I'm now going to go to my section. And this is where I want these walls to be. Let me go ahead and drop these down so they're actually sitting on the roof area. Um, they don't have to, I guess. I can just drop them down to roof. Uh, I'm not worried about the other walls at this point. So um, let's go back to level one. Now in level one, uh, here's my walls, and I'm going to put, let's say, run the trusses in this direction, and maybe I want to slope to the back of the building. I'm going to start with a reference plane. I'm going to put a reference plane in here, and I'm going to go ahead and name that reference plane to truss. Okay, I'm going to do truss one. So I have multiple trusses. Okay, uh, so that is the name of the reference plane. This is important because this is where the reference, uh, the actual truss is going to be built. Then I'll go to the section. Now it's time to create an in-place family. Uh, based off of that. Now, all the logistics of how it's going to seat and all that, that is up to you. I just want to show you how to build a, a quick custom truss. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an in-place family. Now, two things we need to do. First is set the work plane, and you'll see it says truss one. So now I'm drawing on that plate, that reference plane that we just saw. Then we're going to use what's called a in-place family. So I'm going to go component, model in place. Now Revit's going to say, what is this object and what category does we want to sit it on? Well, we're going to sit on the roofs. That way if we turn the roofs off, the trusses turn off also. If you want to go ahead and put it under structure, you can. That's fine. I just wanted to pick one. And I'm going to call it truss. Okay. 
if you want to put, I guess, as I mentioned, if you want to put on structure, you can. Now, so here I am, and now I want to build the truss. Now, I'm going to use an extrusion, and being that I set the work plane on truss one, when I come over here, extrusion, let's say I want this thing, let's say it's a two by six. All right, so a two by six is approximately nominal six inches wide. Now, you can do the math, but if I come over here and I say, okay, I want to go maybe if it's six inches wide, I'm going to go two and three quarters on the positive and two and three quarters on the negative. What that should give me is five and a half, right? So I've just now defined the actual extrusion. And then you can also pick a material. Go out here, choose a material if you want it to render or shade proper. Now at this point, let's say I want to create that, that, um, that Pratt truss. I can use line work and actually draw in what I want. Now let's say I have a bearing plate on that truss and it comes up and let's say I'm gonna make these things two foot six deep. So there we go. Now I can draw in whatever shapes I want here. Draw it in. Okay, so that is the truss. Now sometimes the truss will have a kind of a bearing plate component to it. So I'm gonna now use the offset command and I'm gonna offset, let's say uh, 1.5 inches. That's for our nominal lumber, maybe here and maybe here. Uh, I may even offset it here and here, but we'll talk about that as we go. Now, I'm only going to do part of it. I'm not going to spend a whole afternoon drawing out the truss for you guys. I just want to show you what you can do. Now, I'm going to put a couple of lines in here, and I can draw in whatever I want. And notice how I'm, I can actually use my um, angle stuff and actually draw in whatever I need. So I'm just going to draw a couple of them like so. Now, at this point, if I wanted this to be inch and a half, I could then use the offset again. And I'm going to say offset inch and a half. And I'm just going to go this direction. And then let's see if we can get this one in this direction also. Tab. Okay. That would have probably worked. We'll go ahead and tab this one. And then we'll put this one here. All right. Now, um, now it's a matter of us cleaning these up. I'm just going to use nudge command. I'm going to nudge this over a little bit. And now using some of the tools that we have in Revit, I'll go ahead and do some, some housekeeping. Now, when you're doing the housekeeping, you have to consider how all these things are going to tie together. And we need to make a nice, clean product. I guess, for lack of better words here, I'm going to break it here. I'm going to break it here. Let me turn off delete inter inners. I'm just going to break it and then break it and then maybe break it here. Now, I'm just going to use the trim the corner. I'm going to clean this up. Again, you can spend more time cleaning them up the way you want them to look. All I'm doing here is showing you an example of how to make these things happen. See if I got one there. Yep. So I've created now uh, pretty much this truss system. Now I'm going to take that out and I'm going to make sure that it's all cleaned up. So what you can do, and, and even if you need to move these things, but go ahead and lay your math out, get it where you need it to be. And you'll notice what we created here was a bunch of closed shapes. Now I'm going to put another um, line over here, like so. And now I'm going to fillet these out. I'll say fillet, uh, but trim the corner old AutoCAD stuff coming through. So you see how I created that element. Now, just to recap, it's soft lumber, uh, two and three quarter inches, both sides of the reference plane. When I hit finish, um, it should create that element. Oh, I don't know what I did. Ah, dang it. Hope I didn't screw that up. Let's go ahead and hit finish. Didn't like it, let's see. Oh, depth. All right, let's see what happens. Let's hit finish. Let's go to 3D. All right, there it is. Um, I don't know what happened, maybe view depth, I'm not sure. But notice how you see the, the that actual truss sitting there. Now, if I wanted to add slopes to it or whatever, that is all good to go. I'm gonna go down to my roof framing plan and uh, let's go to site plan so we can see everything. So you can see the truss sitting above and you see the reference plane. Now, here's the second trick, is to grab the reference plane and grab the actual, I'm holding the control key down, and grab the truss. And then what you can do is create a group. Now, what this is going to do, I'm going to call this, let's say, Trust 1, is give us the ability to put them all over the place. And if we if we want to reuse it, we can. Let me show you an example here. Trust 2. Now, I'm going to hit Copy. And you can copy them. You can uh, array them. You can do whatever you want to do to, to lay these trusts out. So I've just got three of those trusts, four of them. So now I go back to 3D. If I needed to manipulate the truss, what I'm going to do is go back to my section. There's the truss. I can grab the truss, and being that it is in a group, I'm not going to ungroup it. I'm going to edit the group. So let's say I needed to add a slope on here. I could grab this, edit in place, and I can take the line work, edit extrusion. Now, a couple of steps to get in here, but if I needed to, let's say, put a slope like that, well, let's go ahead and just undo that. Let's say I want this, this element to come way over here. 
I'm just showing this as an example so you can see them all update. When I hit finish, you notice how I've updated one. Now I'm gonna hit finish the model. Okay, the model's finished, now finish the group. Now what does that do for us? Let's check it out in 3D. Being that we nested in the group, see how they all updated. So if you're an early design, you're not really sure what's gonna happen with that truss, you can put it in a group, and then you can pop populate the group and then update one truss at a time and it updates all the others. So you could have a series of them to make that happen. Now, this one here is a structural truss. You see it says it's a truss, et cetera, et cetera. This here is an in-place family. Um, I could come over here, edit the group, and I can manipulate this family if I wanted to. So the item that's here, this family, can be uh, in-place family, can be manipulated and, and work just as well as the others, at least if you're not the design, if you're not designing the trusses. This is pretty much a placeholder showing them how to design the truss um, by someone else. But there you go. Hopefully that tip helped. And that is creating uh, simple trusses in Revit.